And this is the wow tray. Jason Gibbs is the curator of the J.B. Wallace R.E. Ruffley Museum of Entomology at the University of Manitoba. He says what started out as a small collection rapidly grew into a multi-million swarm. This is a collection that was formed uh, about 100 years ago by the sort of the first sort of entomologist who worked and uh, sort of started the department. And at first it was quite small, uh, but over the decades it sort of increased and got larger and larger. And now we're at somewhere about two and a half to three million specimens, but we don't have an exact number. The oldest specimen dates back to the late 1800s, and they've all been carefully pinned, tagged, and preserved. And Gibbs says more than a century later, they're still adding new species to the collection. When I started here six years ago, the number of wild bee species known from the province from, you know, decades and decades of people doing research on bees was 236. Um, it's now 392. I remember the first time I found one that was actually a, a, an undescribed species that no one had ever dis, uh, identified it at all. It didn't have a name. Uh, and I, I think I did a little dance. I mean, I kind of jumped out of my chair and was just like, this is amazing. Gibbs gets requests from across Canada and the world to study the specimens in the collection. And now as the climate crisis is heating up, Gibbs says these insects could hold some important answers. We don't have time machines that we can go back and look at how these things have changed over time, but we have this collection and so we can go back and see what were people collecting in 1913? What were they collecting in 1916, uh, 1960, uh, up, up until the 2000s? Research shows insect numbers are declining due to climate change and pesticide use in Canada, but scientists believe there's a bigger threat to these tiny invertebrates. Habitat loss, and that one might be the biggest and most important issue of all. And we have a lot of important work to do in Canada to think about halting and reversing nature loss in our most heavily used areas. Jeremy Kerr specializes in macroecology and conservation at the University of Ottawa. He says collections like these are key to understanding how some insects might respond as the earth warms. They provide us with historical insights that are not available using any other technique. There are no shortcuts to be had there. Back on the Manitoba campus, Gibbs says one way people can help insects is by planting native prairie plants, but also to pay attention to see which bugs are buzzing around. You can be the person to go and find that undescribed species and, and you can be the person to name it. And, uh, it's, it's a really exciting opportunity. Fiona Odlum, CBC News, Winnipeg.